from the heart of Tigerland in the brand spanking new studio at Punt Road's Emmy Bank Centre, it's time for the show that's captured to the imagination of the yellow and black nation. Talking Tigers. Over to you, boys. Hi, Tiger fans, and welcome to a much happier Emmy Bank Centre studio today after Richmond's massive win over GWS on Saturday. And if the weekend's result hasn't got you up and about, today's show definitely will because Richo's top five is back. Brina's gags are also back after a one-week hiatus there, and along with all the other regular segments on what is a massive Dreamtime week here at Tigerland. And as usual, Richo's here, and alongside him is a confused what, Tony Greenberg. What, what's, this wasn't part of our production meeting. What was not What we, do you we, mean? We're going with Jumping Jack Flash, for obvious reasons. <laughs> off the, what is that? That's uh, Night Train by Guns N' Roses. <laughs> Night Train. Well, what's off? It's for Jack. He oh, catches the train. Yep. Okay. <laughs> right. Doesn't he? I thought Jumping Jack Flash is a bit better, but anyway. No, no we've, we've used that before. Used All right, before. Okay. You've got a bad Night memory. Train. I know you're getting on a little well, bit. You can't remember. Mm. Scones uh, pointed out this morning that we'd already used Jumping Jack oh, Flash a few years ago. Okay, we exactly couldn't have come right. up with a better train. You didn't like the guns? Could have been My Baby Takes the Morning Train. No. Surely oh, you like a bit Leo of Guns N' Roses. Leo Sayers Train. Do you like Guns N' Roses? Not really. No. Yeah. No. Well, what, what would you, you play? Mean? What would you, if you had your choice? I would have gone with Jumping Jack Flash. No, I mean like... Oh, my yeah. baby takes the morning train. Yeah, okay. Sheena Easton. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Last train to Clarksville. Last train to Clarksville. I like that. <laughs> hey, yeah, you've well, that... got an idea, haven't you, coming up soon for our songs before we get into the yeah. show? Well, of course, it's 50-year anniversary of the Beatles' visit to Australia and Melbourne. Yeah. Yep. So we thought June could be Beatles month. We just played Beatles... For every episode, we thought June. that, did we? Who thought? We all thought oh, that. Sorry, I thought that. <laughs> what do you think, AC? <laughs> no, I don't like it. You don't, you don't like, like it? it? No. Well, as long as I can have a, a, a month, we're going to have a not, month of you, our own. You're not going anywhere near. No. The so music okay. So show. you're saying if we let Tone have a month of the Beatles, we can then decide yep. a month of the yep. next uh, song. Oh, that worries me. Why? Oh, no, let's shake sh- on that. You no, might actually, not, oh, I, I need to think about it. No, no, shake on it. Oh, all right. There you go. Because oh. there's different people who li- like different types of music and they don't want to listen to all your rubbish yeah. 50s and 60s. Oh, all like, right. Beatles is rubbish, is it? <laughs> no, well, oh. generally it's rubbish. We'll let Scon have a week. You can have a yep. week. I'll have a week. Uh, and then yep, we'll great. jointly have a week. Oh, I've created a all monster right. with this. Yeah, Good. you have. Anyway. Anyway. Hey, he was pretty flash, jumping jack, wasn't, wasn't he? he? What do you got for us in terms of it? He broke all sorts of records on the weekend. Oh, he did. Tone. Well, he did. It was the equal most number of goals kicked in a match by a Richmond player yep. since 1931, so 83 years. So that's when Doug Strang, round 2, 1931 against kicked North. 14. Yeah, kicked 14, which is still a club record. I thought Jack was going to give it a fair... Uh, yeah. night. Well, he did. At half time, I was he? convinced Doug was in a lot of trouble. Well, three-quarter yeah. time he had 11. Yeah. yeah. So, um, But anyway, so... Only Michael Roach twice kicked 11 in a game since then, and obviously Jack on uh, Saturday. So uh, yeah. Now, now sure Matthew, uh, mm. would you have passed that one off to Koch, or what's the go there? He was staring down the barrel of 12, <sighs> and he had a... Sp- sp- he would have jagged that goal, skip surely. Skip a call for it, though, um, didn't he? I think he turned around, and mm. Koch was streaming toward him, and it was it's one of them instinctive decisions, yeah. but it was yeah. the wrong decision. <laughs> Had to go back and kick his 12. <laughs> 12. Kick the what 12. sort of a full forward dish is that off? Yeah, mind you, Koch did deliver it one to him a bit no, later did. on oh, in the quarter, 50 out on the boundary. I mean, yeah, what's well, he going to do with that? It yeah, was an outstanding point. effort, though, wasn't it? Well, in, After the said, week that he had. I yeah. know. You said they pointed this out in your six-pointers mm. this week. The mental toughness mm. required mm. to do that. No doubt, because some some people after, you know, copying it, and I thought, look, he, Jack has said himself, he said the wrong thing, put his hand up, said it was the wrong thing, copped his medicine, copped a whack from Dimmer, mm. copped more than a whack from the media. Mm. Um, mm. You know, they went a little bit overboard. Mm. So for him to go up there and, you know, steal himself up, to go out and put on that display, mm. and it was a display of marking, but the kicking, how, yeah. until the oh, last yeah. few shots, I know. Yeah. that takes mental toughness. Does, so. Yeah. Yeah, it was a great performance. Well, clearly that extra training session he oh, had just did the trick, didn't it? Very good. I'll tell you what, you make a lot of it, but I've never seen a more hungry media throng out the front. Seriously, yeah, they had a... every entrance wrapped up. They had cameras everywhere. They would have chased him almost a kilometre down the street, two mm. cameras, just mm. chasing him down the street. It was just Isn't it funny? almost laughable. Isn't it funny how yeah. the, the media... And we're not we're not making light of it now because no, Jack no, no. did the wrong thing with mm. what he said. Oh, I think so. Well, he's acknowledged that. He's acknowledged that, but... It's funny how, as the media outlets, we always say we want players yeah. to speak their mind. Know. We want and then them to. S- they do. And as soon as they do, <laughs> we just cut them down to shreds. It's just, yeah, it's yeah. a funny old world. Well, of course, there could have been a few other ways that he might have been able to leave the ground without being, you know, uh, attacked by the media. Do you think? Yeah. Well, I gave him a couple of ideas. Yeah. What a, a hot air balloon, <laughs> yeah. a rocket launcher, <laughs> cannon. 
<laughs> he could have gone out as uh, the club mascot. Yeah. Or even as his own mascot. Yeah. <laughs> or uh, who were the other mascots? Kochi's mascot? Yeah, Ivy. Or Ivy's mascot? Yeah, yeah. That would have been confusing, wouldn't it? Lids? Could have gone Lids, out as, could have gone out as Lids' yeah. mascot. That would have been humorous watching the mascot jump <laughs> into the car, wouldn't <laughs> it? Or just walk out the front door, you wouldn't, yeah. yeah. That would hey, have been great. And he kicked, his uh, total score was more than the GWS, and that was the first time in a long time well, as well. Well, you know it? the last time that that happened, oh. yeah. don't you? Well, well, that's why you're bringing it up, yeah, isn't it? Very interesting. What do you mean? Oh, what do you mean? Well, it was round 21, 1996. Oh, yes. And there's two Richmond players <laughs> in the one day that That's kicked right. more than Who the entire Fitzroy <laughs> total that day. Who? I think Fitzroy kicked five, six. Well, I'm looking at him now, and it's yeah. not AC or scones. No. <laughs> so you kicked, what, seven? Seven, and the Chieftain. Seven, five, and the Chieftain kicked six. He did. So you, the two of you. I well, didn't know more, that until you brought that up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Oh, well, that yeah, was a great effort. Extraordinary performance. And he, he did, he was under the pump. Um, yeah, he but was. but it does prove, and everyone sort of says this flippantly, but he is as passionate as they come about this mm. footy club, mm. and he realised, you know, in the 24 hours afterwards that he said the wrong thing, and, and all he wanted to do was just play well for, for his teammates and for the coach. Is yeah. there a touch of Warney about <laughs> it, do you think? Does he thrive on being in the spotlight like this, you know, like Shane Warne used to I don't to think do? he means to put himself in the spotlight, no, but, but he once he's there, <laughs> then <laughs> he starts to react to it. He so. does, very positive. Well, I'm not sure the mm. comparisons to no. Jason Akermanis. No, 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 no. He's nothing, he's nothing like that. No, it's good for footy. You know, yeah. Although it's not good for GWS, because Josh Kennedy kicked 11 goals yeah, the week yeah, before. Yeah, yeah. But isn't it good to see a few big bags of goals again oh it is top of, the, top of the Coleman too yeah yeah. do you reckon when Heath Shaw left Coleman and went to GWS he th- thought that he might have been spending you know 45-50 minutes in a game on uh, playing on Jack Rewell no, no so I, I reckon sure. he was wrapped after Steve Morris went <laughs> yeah, to the start point, of the so. game every opportunity he took to, to yeah, uh, no, he did a good job around, Morrow so. might have reinvented himself as you yeah. said also this week yeah. in the six pointers we'll, oh, geez. we'll get into that when we yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. what about a week at the turnaround that it makes we, Richmond was that far out of the pump last no. week in terms of performance and on field and people you sort of forget that after a big win but can I make one point yes. about where we're at this year and it's not making any sort of excuse for poor form but Paul Roos made a point when he went to Melbourne it's all about percentage you know mm, it's yeah. not about wins and losses it's about our percentage because he thinks mm. the percentage reflects mm. a competitive team doesn't mm. he yep. yes well our percentage is over 100 well it is yep. now after a 113 <laughs> point no, win no but it is so yeah. you know the, it, we haven't been that bad no, no, no. We should have won a few more games, yeah. and we've got the opportunity now to, to try and uh, gain a little bit more confidence this week. Mm. I mean, it's funny, though. The, the critics straight afterwards said, well, you beat nothing. They were pathetic, yeah. GWS and all that. But not, the same cri- Yeah, but the same critics were tipping them, GWS, to win. Hmm. Well, there was a lot of people yeah. that were, you know, um, Best team GW. for the year. They had Mumford yeah, back yeah, in, had a week Cameron off, back in. Yeah, had a week off, anyway. Richmond struggling. And they went in confident too, the, the, yeah. the Giants. Yeah, so. Anyway. Anyway, that, they no good if uh, they don't bring that performance again in the next exactly. few weeks as well. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how they go. Now, it's a big week, Dreamtime mm. week. Richo, you're very familiar with the Dreamtime of the G game. It's, yes. a, it's one of our bigger games of the year. Yeah, it's great. And it's become a real one of those marquee games. Now, Anzac Day is obviously the biggest one probably with Essendon and, and the Pies. But mm. after that, I think Dreamtime's yeah, the right next sort of how many showcase did you play game. In? You would have played in, what, four? Uh, Five, yeah, six, I seven, think four. Yeah, four. yeah, I think four. And, you know, it's eight. grown each year. Great atmosphere, you know, all the festivities yep. before the game. You get, you know, a crowd of, you know, at least 70,000. Well, it was normally. a record crowd last year, yeah. 84,000. 84, yeah. Mm. It's grown from, I think, 49 was the mm. first Yeah, I think crowd. so. Yeah, so. Mm. Mm. So it's, it's a great occasion now, and I think the players really look forward to it. And it's it's become a whole, because of Dreamtime of the G, this has now become a whole round. Every team's wearing yep. the... Indigenous designed jumpers, and we were the first, weren't we? we were the first. How, many, how many have we had? We've all had up? four now, mm-hmm. and uh, it's a great opportunity for Indigenous artists uh, who have obviously commissioned to do the work. And we get more and more entries every year, and it's fantastic. The players, more impo- most importantly, they love the Guernseys. Um, mm. Shane Edwards, who's mm. our sole Indigenous player on the senior list. So this is the fifth Indigenous Guernsey, it's or the fourth? Fourth, fourth, it's the fourth. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. So mm. we were the first four years ago. Um, players love it, um, and they just look fantastic. You know, it's, we were talking to uh, our own Brett Deludio before. Weren't yes, we? he loves uh, lo- loves the look of oh, the new jumper too. Now we should need to talk about lids because this he, he likes to wear long sleeves. Richo, yeah, he does. You know? <laughs> So he wants to don the the long sleeves this week, but there's yeah. an issue. Is it's it? the what? clash strip. It's yeah. got black sleeves. What sleeves will be yellow? Oh, they yellow too. sleeves. <laughs> How cool. cool. That'll stand out, won't it? She would have never seen that before, hey, have we? I don't that's, know. Do you reckon that's to try and catch the umpire's uh, eye? <laughs> yes, it well, He's be. obviously after another Yoyukin medal because yep. yeah. he's won one. He's, he's that's going to look pretty good, isn't it? The great. yellow sleeves. It could be the first 
dual winner of the Yaya Yukon Award. Well, no one's won and, it the, and the first wearing yellow sleeves. Yeah, spot on. There's no doubt about that. Mm. He's, a little, no, good. he's a little bit worried about the review on Monday, Ooh. though, because if he doesn't perform oh, well, you know, yellow we'll, sleeves we'll will stand, stand out. out. We're uh, calling the game on <laughs> Oh, yeah, you'll love that. Yeah, I look think, out for them. I think our man, the big bristler, might like that, one. He? he? loves that sort of stuff. He does, so doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. He he the, kids out on the ground yeah. and, you know, all that stuff. He'll yeah. be having a look at Brett's yellow sleeves. Mm. Yeah, so that he... He did say he will be on again in the next couple uh, of weeks. So maybe even next week we'll sneak him in. Yeah, he's our regular. Yeah, exactly. Mm. And we will also get uh, another keen listener of the podcast in the next few weeks. Yes. Carl Walsh. Oh, Carl. Carl. Yeah, yeah. Our, our, yeah. Carl sent our esteemed board member. Yeah. Yep. Carl sent me an email last week. I haven't had time to respond to yet because I've had gigs on. But, Very busy. Uh, <laughs> but Carl, I yeah. got the email and yeah. we are going to have you on in yeah, the next no, uh, few weeks. Good. Yeah, We can get a board insight into how we're travelling. Well, that would Aren't be we? the point of it all, Tone. Oh, thanks. Some Considering he's on the, the board. Uh, Would it not? just thought he might crack a few Irish gags or something. <laughs> That's what he was coming in for. That was as <laughs> obvious as the nose on your face. Uh, if you start that oh, sort of no. stuff. No, no, what no. What do you mean? I've, you know that, that <laughs> my solicitors, <laughs> oh, Mark, no, Martin, Barton and Fargo, I'll get them straight onto you again. The old nasal vilification. Nasal vilification. <laughs> I've been nasally vilified by you before, and it's really not... <laughs> <laughs> the sort of week that you should be bringing this up. Oh. Okay, so just leave it oh, alone. Right, okay. Oh. All right. Let's move right along then and get into the tweets. Now we. <laughs> Scones isn't quite as sharp as he normally is. is he? I think he's, he's just enjoying the show at the moment. <laughs> he I think is. he's just he's engaged. Now that's good. That's what we want. We do want him engaged. Scones. Yeah, exactly. All right. Uh, the the tweet. <laughs> I came across a really good tweet from you uh, during Did, the week, No, Greeners. it's not me. It's Please. not you? you no, sure? Ty Vickery, it's not me. He well, still thinks got, it's me. It's got at, at Tiger Land Tone, Tone no, Greenberg. it's not me. Anyway, uh, the tweet says, uh, bad news for on Dan Jackson with scans confirming he is a ranger. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag pray for DJ. Hey, just on that. <laughs> That's good. Hey, just on that. Well, Who very, sent that out? Sorry. That's Tone Greenberg. No, oh, our tone. It's very amusing because Jacko went on 3RW on Sunday. Yes. You, know, you went on. but did. Um, and he was interviewed, and it was a lengthy interview. And they asked him how he'd pulled up after because he caught yeah. a bit of a knock, you know, heavy knock and was subbed out of the game on Saturday. And he goes, oh, I'm a bit ginger. Oh. And then, he, then she then, as she said, laughed at himself. Yeah, yeah very good. Ginger. We'll get an update on him shortly in the medical room. But there's a, a couple of Jack Rewatt related tweets, which you wouldn't uh, be surprised at, given mm-hmm. uh, the events of last Ooh, week. Yeah. And jagging 11 on the weekend. So the real Josh Damon says, after Jack Rewalt's successful 11-goal game, the entire Richmond team will now follow his lead and take the train everywhere. Ah, well done you, Josh. My baby uh, takes the morning train. It yeah. actually is relaxing getting the train. Yeah. I caught a train. Did you? I get a train every day. On I Monday. Don't really find it that relaxing. Not no, so relaxing nice. at seven forty-five in the morning. <laughs> oh, <no>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what time uh, did you get it? No, what, I was about eleven thirty. No, I was about two in the Arvo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, on. yeah, it's fairly <laughs> relaxing then. Yeah. Just checked the tweets and mm. sent out a few emails. Yeah, no, good, yeah. Tell you what, a man of your size would not enjoy the morning peak yeah, no, on trains. Do you know how to get a Mikey? You know, I've got a Mikey. Don't worry about that. You ask Jack. Red Bartlett. We yeah. know pretty well. Yes. Kev's son. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jack Rewalt's kicking all these goals so quickly, it's as though he has a train to catch or something. Oh, ah, that's humorous. Ah, boom, boom. Yep. Yeah. Some really crisp yeah, another one is stuff good. there. Yeah. I like it. Paul like Montgomery. It. Jack Rewalt might not have a train ticket, but he's certainly got tickets on himself at the moment. Ah, that was a quarter time. Ah, you're allowed to have tickets good. on yourself when mm, you kick yeah. 11 goals. Yeah. So, Keith, there's a humorous mm. tweet, those ones. So. Mm. Yeah. Oh, that's good, Tone. You weren't impressed. No, no, no. He was no. our key, or he was my key to the game. Really. Oh, come oh, on, mate. Sorry. Yeah. All right. Emails then. You have got mail. You just got that. I oh, just got it. <laughs> <laughs> my key. I'm not that sharp, Tone. No, you're not. Uh, Simon Baldwin, who emails us regularly. Yeah, Baldy. Baldy. Yeah, Baldy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, gents, just wanted to say congrats on the podcast this week. Great to see you guys were able to rise above the really difficult week and give me and no doubt others a much needed chuckle. Jeez, it was a tough week, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah. Oh. Well, the Richo's hangover story was a pearl. Remember that one? That was yeah. a cracker. Oh. You and the chief out in the town. <laughs> uh, to follow up on the story, this is this still goes um, a couple of weeks on. To follow up on the story of the Windy Hill brawl, I was watching an interview with Mel Brown this week, who recounted the said brawl and indicated that he was in fact trodden on by a horse. Yeah, we know. Yeah. <laughs> well done, Richo. Right on the money. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, AC suggests that uh, all you need for your end of year review, performance review is a copy of the podcast that you missed. Lids tried hard, but Greeners and Richo clearly struggle to step up to the number one role. Oh. I'm just reading this. 
and were a long way off their best form. Would you say you're the number one component? Clearly, clearly the depth in Talking Tigers team is not what we thought it was. The depth. Oh, no I depth. thought we handled it. Yeah, no, I thought it was a top rating one ever. Yeah, it mm. was. <laughs> it was pretty good. I reckon Lids had something <laughs> small to do with that. <laughs> <laughs> sort of says that no one listens for us. They just want players on that. Right. We should just put in the in the headline each week that someone like Lids is on it or yeah. Yeah. get yeah. a few more hits. Yeah, yeah. me. Yeah. Just just we, we tried people. to get Dusty on today, and he just didn't want to know about We've it. Got to get him on. He got to get him. Was coming in. He, and then he opened up to you in that wasn't. interview a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, so I reckon we can get him on. One of the stage. inform players in the oh, competition yeah. right now. He's Dustin absolutely firing. Yep. All right. Next email comes from Kleinings. That's all I've got. Kleinings. Kleinings. Oh, it's Tim. Tim Kleining. Yeah. Uh, hi, TT boys. Keep the faith and show the true Tiger spirit. Now it's time for us to be united and fight. Uh, speaking of walls. No, he says, because hey, I missed this bit. With our back's against the wall. Oh, ah, yeah. got to get that video yeah, first. Yeah. Speaking of walls, I read with interest young master Greenberg's article on Richmond players kicking a goal with their first kick in league football. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, Tim says, I'm pretty sure Matthew Wall kicked a goal with his first kick as well. I think it was against Hawthorne in round one, 1980. Well, it's not in the uh, media guide, so... Right, so it mustn't be right then. Well, you think the media guide. guide would have all that? They've got a list yeah, of every pretty player. good normally. Mm. Anyway... Right. Well, you can check that up after the show. Ben Lennon joined it, didn't he? He did. He did. Yeah. Uh, last one comes Number from... Number 12, Matthew Wall. Was, was he? Mm. There you go. Was he? Wall okay. before you. Mm. Mm. What did you say? Wall before you. Wall before you. Yeah, yeah, very good. <laughs> Jeez, you're on today. <laughs> <laughs> Corey Weeks uh, says, hi, guys. Weeksy. Uh, great, Weeksy. Great to be writing this email after a win. Uh, you may recall my email around this time last year. I was preparing to head off to Manila to play footy That's in the right. Manila Cup. No, I've forgotten it. No, okay. I remember. Do you? Yeah, yeah. I remember Flea Waitman went over there with ah. uh, Jim Jess. They were the oh, uh, ambassadors. Right. That's right. The ghost and the flea. Yeah. Mm. So Corey said, in that same week, our twin boys, Max and Leo, arrived, so I didn't make the trip. Uh, and he says, after l- learning to live with no sleep, our boys, who are both Tiger supporters, are now a year old. Good news is that I'm heading, uh, this year I'm heading off with the team, the Malaysian Warriors. Mm. So we're looking forward to meeting Flea and Jim Jess this weekend as I believe they are making the trip. They're is going that again, right? Is They're going again. Yeah, yeah. and you know, who, uh, know you know who now lives in KL? Yes. And is looking to join the Malaysian Warriors? Yes. No. Tell me. Is Tim Fleming. Yes. Who's just Flem? Take, he's just taken up a is job right? over there, Flem, general manager of a new online uh, car sales okay. business. That's yeah, exactly yeah. right. Yeah. Corey's all over it as oh, well. Is he? He reckons also that, fella, Dan- that Daniel Chick is going over there as well. Oh, is he? Yeah, mm-hmm. ex-premiership player. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I don't think Flemo's wife was that wrapped about really? it. She thought she was rid of the football mm. club for a little while. Mm. And he's oh, now yeah. joined the Malaysian, what were they called? Malaysian what? Warriors. Yeah, yeah. I Warriors. thought Daniel Chick was going to Melbourne. That's what I'd heard. Melbourne Footy Club joining Paul Roos. Was he? Well, yeah. The Assistant. heading was Chick a D. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> The gags are really back, aren't they? They're back. <laughs> They're really it's back. Gone, it's gone to the babby. <laughs> He's far from impressed. I'm not sure you should be sneaking them all in mid-show. No, 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 no. I've got some rippers today. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, real good ones. Yeah, that'll be tremendous. Mm. Uh, thanks again for all your emails in. Keep them coming, as usual. Now, yeah, the medical room, uh, the big uh, the big one this week is Dan Jackson, of course, who copped that kick to the groin area. Um, he's got to get through training this week. The main session is on Thursday, so I think he's pretty confident. Is he he's still confident. limping when you saw him. No, no, he's he's that? he's come along a long way since um, Saturday. So he well, was pretty come, confident. He's come yesterday. from Sydney to here. Yeah, 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 correct. But he's all right. He's feeling good, so he's probably expecting to get up, which is good. A couple of uh, very foul injuries. Oren Stevenson uh, went off during the game. Um, he's also a test for this week. I uh, think he's got a, a hamstring, and Todd Elton hurt his shoulder too. He's also a test, so may get up. Um, the other two boys with the fingers, Liam McBean and Nick Flostone, they're uh, one to two away, so she'll be back fairly shortly. Richo, you got anything to say? Uh, <laughs> was, Dylan, was Dylan Grimes, he wasn't injured. I saw him no, going no. in to have a scan with Jacko. Really? Was he just following him? Oh, everyone gets a scan these yeah, days, they? Richo. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's just right. precautionary, mate. Well, he was yeah. on the news walking in there. Yeah, well, because they all camp out the front and wait yeah, for the yeah. players to get scans these days. Yeah. He cannot escape that yeah, job, okay. seriously. Mm. It's just a... Mm. There's a hunger out there for oh, yeah, anything. They're ravenous. News. Ravenous. Ravenous. Yes. Tommy Brown would be down there. Tommy he? Brown. He's, he's hey. a, he loves our car park, Tommy Brown. <laughs> oh, he does. <laughs> does. <laughs> Have we got a car park spot for him yet? Are we should. Yeah, we need yeah, to have the yeah. Tom Brown car park spot. We'll just a little mm. section mm. we can just That's right. cordon off. Maybe the whole car park would be <laughs> yeah. named after him. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Tommy uh, car park. Yeah, yeah, our, our man, Chrissy Newman, he's uh, two to three weeks old. Old balls. Old balls. <laughs> How is he going? You're not, well, what not about, much anymore. What, a, 
Where was he on? Can someone tell me where he was on Saturday? Because the I watched the ABC coverage early of the VFL game. Yeah. What was the first quarter before the yeah. AR, AFL game? Yeah. And they said that he was actually coaching the uh, was yeah. the defensive <laughs> coach for the VFL side. <laughs> and I happened to mention that to somebody. He said that wasn't there. No, he, he was in there. Sydney. He, he was, was in, in Sydney. He was in Sydney. Oh, well, there you go. He would yeah. have been up there with Lozza doing a little <laughs> lap around the opera house and over the bridge and carrying on like a pork chop. <laughs> was he? House. Was he? God, I don't know. Just having a little windy walk around the house. A harbor. windy walk. <laughs> yeah, because he got some airtime post game on uh, on the he? footy. Yeah. Okay. It was, it, so did the bear, actually. The bear, Mark Opie, he was up there. Hey, bear. Yeah, no, yeah. the bear. Mm. On, the, mm. on the green stuff after the game. Yeah. Mm. Congratulations. That's boys. our team manager for mm. anyone who doesn't yeah. know. Mm. 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 Team manager of the year. All Australian. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Seven years in a row. Mm. Mm. Yeah, spot mm. on. Uh, the other guys uh, on the injury list, Jake King, still uh, a couple of months away. Uh, and Dave Asprey, who was in here the other day, um, is on crutches still, but um, likes. You know, it should be running in about five or six weeks. Yeah, so that's good. That's good news. Good to uh, hear from him. Cause that's he's good then, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah it yeah. is. So uh, the surgery went well. Well, our boy, the chief, okay, mm. he's... Uh, He'd been pretty quiet since our uh, night out with Ian Stewart. <laughs> Still recovering. Yeah, Stewie took him to Chinatown and me. Shopping it town. And uh, we weren't well. So mm. the Chief had a quiet week mm. in uh, in uh, his festivities, but yeah. he reared his head again yesterday, oh. the Chief. And this may be controversial yeah. too for someone sitting around this uh, desk, AC. Oh, what? Yeah. It will. What? We had a, a special <laughs> guest here yesterday at the ME Bank Centre. Yep. Upstairs at the KGI, uh, it was the great Michael Long, yep. who of course is down here for uh, Dream Time and, and the Walk to the G, which uh, Longy's been doing now for a number of years. So it was great to have Longy here. So he was upstairs having a chat to everyone, and uh, somebody asked the question, "Yep, how did the Dream Time concept start?" Yep, mm-hmm. and uh, no one sort of really put their hand up mm-hmm. in the room. All of a sudden, the chief reared his head, <laughs> stood up in front of the whole group and sort of said, look, I don't really want to say this, but it was my idea. Oh, oh please. Oh, now, I'm certain that he oh, had nothing to do with it. Nothing whatsoever. Did he touch? Can you answer this for me he then? He had nothing whatsoever to do so with it. So how did it come about? This no. would actually really make you upset, wouldn't it? Because yeah. you are oh. famously the man who came up can with you the concept. I did not. How many times on this show do I have to say... I did not come up with the concept. Kevin Sheedy was heavily involved and several other people. Right. What, what did you I do? did come up with right. was the title, Dreamtime at the G. So you named it. I named it. So it Kevin wasn't Sh- my concept, so let's but get this, I named it. Let me get this clear. Right. Kevin Sheedy and came a few up, others. And a few others mm. came up with the concept because he would have been coaching Essendon. Correct. And you came up with the name, Dreamtime. At the G. Correct. Great. So what Good. is our chieftain doing? I have no <laughs> idea what responsibility he's doing. for it. I do not know. Oh. This man. He might still be hung over. Well, and maybe not he is. thinking things through rationally. Because that because was I would have thought back then mm. he would have just He wasn't retired. even playing. I don't even know that he was I even think, in the country. Uh, I think he was working was he? I think, I think he, was, he was working at the law firm at this stage. Well, he would have been, yeah. <laughs> so he severely got some memory loss, the chief. Correct. Hasn't he? <laughs> He's got severe memory loss, yes. no doubt. There you so go. that was no the chief uh, this week, mm. AC. Very good. Gee. Oh, yeah. never, he never ceases Jeez. to amaze. He'll be some claiming of the it that all on. over the weekend at every function from now won't until he? Saturday he, night oh, too, won't gee, he? The wobbling over there on <laughs> Saturday night. He will just be strutting around. He'll get on the green stuff for sure. Oh, yeah. no Throw doubt. There's, he won't be able to help himself. Oh, would have no, been good no. to see if you actually, because you couldn't make it, Tony, to the no, Michael Long not. speech, no. if you were there in the room and if you would have objected to... I would have been a the, violent objector, yeah. did the, play, the players enjoyed the longing? Yeah, yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Belinda Duarte was there. She's the director of our current gallery. Conor Gamage Institute. She was fantastic as well. She speaks. She does really, really well. She does. Really she does indeed. Yep. Uh, okay. Let's uh, look back on the GWS game, and it's good to review a game that we won by over a hundred points. It's rare that we can do mm. that. Um, Not good if you gave someone nineteen goals in, though, is it? No. Only won by one hundred thirteen points. Mm. Yeah. No. No good by you. Mm. Uh, but uh, early, clearly, conversion was a, a big part in the fact that we got away. Uh, kick that goals in the first quarter. Yeah, well, it hasn't been a strong point, has it? No. Conversion. No. It's amazing how if you convert a few early, it just spreads it's through the whole side. Simple game when you convert. It isn't is. It? Simple game. But gee, the game. The, I know. I know. GWS struggled, but just the the flow of the ball was a lot well, better. That was the it? most pleasing thing. And, I've, and I actually st- saw a stat. I think for ball movement over the last four rounds or something. Yeah. I think we're ranked. 
fourth now because yeah. we're actually just trying now yeah. to to move the ball on quickly. Yeah. yeah. It yeah. just make and you said this. Sorry, a go good op. Oh, won't go. I'll talk about it in no, and game. You said this so many times as yeah. a the gun key forward that you yeah. were. Just if you can get the ball in quickly hmm. and back yourself in, you, know, you get one it in, one against you your get it in quickly. Yeah. You beat the numbers getting back. You give your forwards mm. one on one chances, mm. and your key forward takes what twelve marks inside fifty. Twelve marks it? inside fifty. And twenty six. Twenty six for the team. Yeah, that's extraordinary. Yeah, Doesn't. It is. <laughs> Doesn't say much for their defence, though. That's poor defending. No, well, they've obviously got a few key defenders out, but, um, yeah, no, it's a, it was an incredible stat. And, and um, you know, I thought um, Ben Griffiths and Ty Vickery yeah. were, um, you know, yeah. were, were really good as well. Yeah. Rancy um, was outstanding. He was, yeah, no doubt about that. Jeez. He's been really good since he's come back mm. in. Three games back now for Rancy? Yeah, I think three games yeah. back. Just yeah. his intercept marking, I mean, he's just looking real, And just showing a lot of composure, too, yeah. isn't he, when he's, yeah, when he's, he's got is. the ball in his hand. So. The other one is, uh, we talked about the influence of Shane Mumford coming back into the side last week, and yeah. the effort of Sean Hampson in the ruck was outstanding yep. all day. He yeah, smashed no uh, Mummy. He yeah. did, didn't he? And yeah. Mummy was the best ruckman at round four before he got injured. Yeah, yeah. Was but, it, I know it's tough coming back after yeah. a long absence, but mm. geez, Hammer smashed him in the yeah. ruck. Well, he said that, um, I think the coach, that, that you know, they put it on him that because yeah. knowing the importance of him having a big game against uh, against Mumford, and uh, geez, he rose to the challenge extremely well. Obviously won uh, majority of the hit outs and also uh, was effective around the ground, took a few took a few grabs too. He did, yep. Four marks and, on the day. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, he was, he was really good. And I think their belief, a little bit of confidence and belief has to come out of that. Yeah. You, well, you'd, you'd hope so. I mean, the, some people say, well, you know, you then it might have been too easy and then you're coming up against obviously a lot hotter opposition on a mm. big game, so that yep. could be an yeah. issue. But yeah, you'd like to no, think I just think to that get a few blokes that, you know, back in form. Definitely. Troy Chaplin, who'd been yeah, you know, down great. a bit, was, was really good. I think yeah. he had... Uh, um, Hayden Hill, who was our uh, stats guru here at the club, said I think he had a career high thirteen contested possessions. I think okay. you know what, and I reckon Chappie, he was he was probably hurting last week as well, yeah. and he he really wanted to prove was like Jack. He came mm. out and really had a, a yep. point to prove and played really good yeah. footy. So yeah. he got he figured in the coaches' votes too. Yep. Chappie this week he got he got a vote. Mm. Did Steve uh, Morris get any votes in the? No, he no, didn't. No, no. Yeah. Jack obviously got the uh, the perfect. That 10. was a good move though, wasn't it? Yeah. It was. Yeah. Because Heath Shaw sets them up, and that's obviously his role to give yeah. run and rebound out of defence. And mm. Morrow terrorised. Well, you him. said yeah. also, you said in your six pointers this week mm. that it might be like uh, just a breath of fresh air yeah. for yeah. you know, just freshen him up a bit. Well, Morrow. I think I think as a defender, where you're constantly under the pump, defending deep in your own defensive fifty, mm. you know, I just reckon it would have been a mental freshen up for mm. him. He still got that defensive role, which he does so well and played mm. tight, hard footy, but. Just without the pressure of knowing you're going to have goals yeah. kicked on you if yeah, you make a mistake, and he's I think very it, disciplined. I think player. it was really good mm. for yeah. him, as I said in the six pointers. Mm. That's exactly right. The other area that uh, really excelled on the weekend it's a it's an indicator of how well we go usually is the midfield, and to see Dustin Martin with 36 and Brandon Ellis with over 30, um, and uh, of course Brett Delidio who yep. played his 200th on the weekend, yeah. uh, and finally celebrated with a win, a milestone game. Yeah, absolutely. Game, the influence of Matt Thomas, all these guys just. It really, um, you know, invigorated the team. Mm. They all came in and they, they played really well. Was he's, Dimmer happy? Uh, he's never uh, overly excited, Dimmer, but let's uh, have a look at his press conference. Uh, no, not so much from a, an individual point of view, but from a, it might seem weird, but from a side point of view, we, we, although we weren't winning games, we could sense that we weren't too far away. We'd made steps forward, hadn't been kicking goals. So we knew it was coming. The important thing for us and our players going forward is what we do with this. Um, you know, we're a long way back. We know our best footy is good enough. We've just got to make sure we consistently deliver what we put out there today. Just want to make mention of our, two of our youngest players, or probably are two yeah. of the youngest players out there the other day. Ben Lennon, yep. obviously in his second game, set up the first two goals. Really clever and looked, you know, showed a lot of poise again. And Matty McDonough, who yeah. finally, after five losses, celebrated yeah. his first win too. So that was that kicked was a goal too, man. And kicked a goal, yeah. You know, yeah very closing. The, the famous Gatorade shower as well. Mm. So. Hey, yeah, uh, Jack Rewalt, who uh, did some talking last week, also spoke to Barry Hall post game on Big the ground. Baz. Let's hear from uh, Jack. Jack, what, what a great response from a pretty tough week for yourself. Um, yeah, it's pretty emotional week, Baz. Uh, obviously, um, yeah, it's great proportion and. Pretty devastated with how I came across, let the coach down, let the side down. And today I was coming with a mindset of just trying to pay faith back in, uh, in Dimmer, the boys, and, and the footy club. Yeah, they're all back mm. on him too. Oh, yeah. they? The Are critics. They? Yeah. Oh, yeah, Jack's hit 11, mm. he's on top of the Coleman. You know, he's mm. 
you know, now he's a superstar well, again. So needs, oh, a big, well, needs a big dream time game, doesn't he? He actually debuted. He, he debuted in the dream time game. Did in he? 2007 was his How'd debut. He go? No, he didn't oh. go all that well. That, but he has kicked six in the dream time game before. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. before a couple of years. It's ago a too, much so. a much used uh, quote, but isn't it a week a long time in oh. footy? Oh, it is indeed, Matthew. <laughs> it is indeed. It's unbelievable. On. All right, the votes right. from the weekend. There won't be too many surprises here. I wouldn't have thought. Nah. Well, I gave uh, one vote to Matt Thomas. I oh, thought yeah. Dimmer uh, put it on the team during the week, one on one and contested footy. Mm. He would have been pretty happy bringing Matt Thomas back into the team because that's his strength. He's a pretty important player, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. he is. Mm. For that w- that point exactly, mm. one vote for him. Two to Dusty Martin, as you mentioned, starting to uh, starting to really be a four quarter player now. Yep. Thirty six touches and run and just a you know, great powerful unit is Dusty and three to Jack, eleven yep. goals and we've talked about what he did. Spot yep. on. Yeah. One more to go? Or? Go, mate. All right. I gave one to uh, Brown and Ellis, so uh, over 30 touches, and I think he had a career-high 12 contested too. Out of that, two to uh, Dustin Martin for all the reasons you said. And of those 36, he actually had 14 in the last quarter, which shows his right. running games out really, mm. really well. Yep. And, of course, uh, three to uh, Jack Rewalt. Spot on. His 11-goal uh, blitz. I went the same. Ellis one, Martin two, Rewalt three. Okay, well that's uh, Jack's come up the leaderboard there with nine votes this round. Koch is still winning on 27, but he hasn't had a vote for a few weeks. Mm. Jack 23, uh, Dan Jackson 17, Dusty now into fourth on 16, and Brandon Ellis is in fifth position on 12. There you go. So uh, getting congested at the top well, of the leaderboard. The, the all important mm. talking Tigers player of the year, oh, actually. A few yeah. might lift this week just oh, knowing oh. that they they're what sniffing do they the get lead. If they, win? they come to. Uh, <laughs> The party that's oh, now party. two years in the making. Oh, oh, It'll be going to be huge. Oh, yeah. Oh, Renault's no, coming. it's going to be at the Brighton Hotel. Is ev- everything's coming along well there, isn't July it? July will be done. Oh, tremendous. We're supposed to be motivating these players to win this <laughs> award. <laughs> I'm not sure. Not We're going de- about it the right way. Not demotivating. Yeah, no. spot on. Okay. All right, the quiz? Mm, quiz. That's quiz right. question last week was? Well, we asked who was currently on the uh, GWS staff. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, who played at Richmond in 1993 and was a BNF winner, uh, left in at the end of 93, and that is Craig Lambert. Mm. Correct. He and loved these long sleeves too, didn't he, Lammy? Yeah. Mm. Luke Cusack, congratulations to you. You uh, win a TTT. Uh, you need to send us your address, Luke, so email us back. We'll okay. Now, this week's question is, obviously, the dream time at the G. Uh, the best on ground will be awarded the Yi Yokin, is it? Yoyukin. Yoyukin. Yep. Yeah, that's as if you That's what say. I said. Close. No, you didn't. I like said Yoyukin. No, you didn't, but that's all what right. Did I no, said Yoyukin. It's, it's a bit like Saudi and Saudi. Yeah. Well, yeah, we just... know I have difficulty with pronunciation. <laughs> you yes, okay. you do. But I try my best for a kid that left school pretty <laughs> early. All right? <laughs> so I want to know who the first uh, Yoyukin winner was. Right, okay. The first oh, one oh, in the first that's dream That's an interesting time. question. Really? Why is it oh. interesting? Well, should we have to qualify this? There wasn't there wasn't a, an IOU can award in the first year. No, it's at the, but we just want the first winner. No, the first winner. I said. Ah, AC. Did you okay. just say at the end of the first? Yeah, I did, and then I yeah. corrected it. Then. <laughs> so the first winner of the IOU can. That's, That's it. all we need. Right. Okay. That's, That's all we it. need. So right. not the blood that was best on ground in the first no, dream time no, game, no. where we didn't have the Yoyukin. Yeah, no, I said the okay. first Yoyukin. Good. I think that's cleared it up. So Good, uh, talking that. tigers at richmondfc.com.au to get that in. I'm as mad as hell and I'm not going to take this anymore. I couldn't believe what happened to me in Adelaide on Whoa, Saturday. what? I know it's a bit about me. Yeah, it is. Well, I suppose it is your, your rant. rant. Well, it yeah. is my rant. And your rant if so you So I'm in a, in a cab with Mick Malloy, who's a keen Richmond man. Keen? And we're, very keen, <laughs> Mick. Mm. And we're on the way to the Hilton Hotel where we were staying on yeah. Saturday night yep. in Adelaide. And we had uh, a bit of uh, the app going, the Richmond app going mm-hmm. in the cab because the Richmond game had started. We're in the cab and Mick's going, how are we going? I said, oh, there we go. Two goes to... One and then three goals to one, four goals to one. So we were getting excited. Yeah, yeah. Couldn't wait to get up the room. Mick said, yeah. I'll come to your room or you come to mine. We'll watch the footy. Yeah, yeah. I said, whatever, Mickey, let's just get in there and watch it. <laughs> yeah. So I get up to my room. I get the remote out and I'm flicking through the channels and seven, ten, nine. Yeah. Uh, I get up to the Foxtel, which yeah. I yes. knew it was almost there. Yeah, yeah, almost yeah, there. Nearly yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, Fox yeah. Sports 1, Fox Sports 2, <laughs> Fox Sports 3, uh, ESPN, oh, no, no Fox on. footy. You've oh, missed a channel. What? No, no Fox, Fox footy. footy. You're kidding. So I could not watch the game. That is extraordinary. So I'm just sitting in my room scrolling oh, through. Oh, no. Could not watch Jack. Lucky Kitt. you were able to watch a full replay of it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But, but 
still. No, I wanted to watch it live. Of course you did. So I kept looking at my phone. Jack's kick four. Jack's kick oh. five. I was flat. I just oh. wanted to watch it. All dressed up with nowhere to go. So for a hotel the caliber yes. of the Hilton, you should have gone. Should have gone in the could local. Could you go over mate. the road? You could, can you find uh, somewhere else? We had to get organised, but. Uh. <laughs> Well, your production meeting. No, I did just do a bit of uh, research for the... Uh, <laughs> I tore that game to pieces, Hawthorne and Port Adelaide, <laughs> the research I did. <laughs> so I couldn't watch the footy and oh, I was filthy. So the Hilton Hotel, you need to get Fox footy on. Yeah, that's Please. not on. Fair enough, too. All right. Yeah, no, that's just Fair enough. To be waiting for a big win, too. You just yeah. want to get in there. And well, did. Jeez, Mick would have been flat. Oh, he was ropeable, Mick. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, no. Ropeable. Mm. Mm. It was good you banter, though, later on, on 7 that oh, night. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're back on track, and yeah. we might have to rest a few players now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, might have got a going. little bit carried might away. Might have just yeah. got a little bit carried away, yeah. But the Clarko interview was humorous, too, by you oh, two. Yeah, just yeah. Bouncing yeah. off each other. Sent him into hospital since then. <laughs> oh, hey, we have thoughts going there? out to Clarko. Yeah, so he do. listens to the show every week, no, too. He was really good mm. before mm. the game, Clarko. He mm. doesn't normally do that sort mm. of uh, jovial stuff. No, that's yeah. a nasty illness it is, it is guys. that's it what is. Stephen Wright who yeah. was CEO had he the gi and barre yeah. but mm. he'll be right he'll bounce back quickly yeah they think they got it early man too. Yeah, that's so. important yep absolutely uh, so big game this Saturday night we'll get into the preview of Dreamtime at the G uh, the 10th one isn't it the 10th one yeah mm. the 10th anniversary mm. um, the big question for the game is uh, does Ivan marriage play mm. gee it's a well, big question well that's the 64 Dollar question, isn't it? Yeah. Is it sixty four? Is it sixty four thousand? Sixty four million. Sixty four million. But they just say sixty four. It's a tough one, know. isn't it? Because it cares, really. yeah, it doesn't really. It's <laughs> a big if, question. If, if he comes in, at all goes out. Yeah. And Griffo kicked a couple and played okay. And Vickers did. Tyrone too. did his job, kicked a couple. Hampson did Hampson, his job. <laughs> Hampson was outstanding. Do you in the just run. then give him one more? One more. What if he's the difference? She's. I'm tempted to bring him in, but I don't know who I'd leave out. Yeah. You know, it's a tough one for the match committee. Mm. You couldn't play all of them. No, you no, can't. You, can't you need them. run and carry, and yeah. you know that'd be just too top heavy. Mm. So that's, that's a that's uh, a tough decision. Ivan's hand is right up. He he wants to be part of this. The big yeah. game too. Yeah. yeah, first game for the year. Dream time. Oof. I'm not sure they could deny the big fella if he walked into is Dimmer's he office. Is he jumping out of his skin? <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Oh, is he well, just, someone's you know, going to be stiff. I'm like, yeah, yeah. He's not very, shy very about wanting well, to get I'm, out Well, I'm saying you play him, but really? I, I can't well, tell you. you. Well, you no, can't, I can't. You can't say who's going to... I'm sitting on the fence. <laughs> right. I can't right. say who goes out. All right, okay. Good luck to Dimmer and the coaches with that mm. one. It's a nice luxury to have, uh, mm. to have him sitting on the sideline. Very what, winnable what? game, boys. Very yeah. winnable. Essendon are struggling to score. Mm. They have heaps of the footy, but they get it inside 50. They just can't score at the moment. I don't think they've mm. scored more than 10 goals in the last month, so big opportunity. Yeah, they've got the yeah. they've got the... The caliber of players up there to, to yeah. keep the winning score. They're just you know with Carlisle mm. and Danaher and mm. uh, Bell yeah. Chambers is back now. Yeah. Ryder plays down there, so mm. you know they've got they've got a quartet there. They're capable of kicking a winning score. They're just not getting it done right at the minute. They're probably so. a little bit like Richmond. They're probably you know they've got yeah. their best team out there, but they're just lo- lacking a little bit of confidence. I think, especially yep. inside that Ford Fifty. I think mm. Paul Chapman's their leading goal kicker with mm. ten for the year. Yeah. Do you tag Watson or Stanton? I'd like, I think you tag the outside. Mm-hmm. I don't think you stop Watson by tagging yep. him. He's okay. a little bit like your Ablett, your yeah. Selwood. I think Stanton had a dream time record 39 touches, mm. I think, last year. Yeah. We've, um, we've developed a couple of players in that area that can go to the, the different types of players. Well, Sean, Sean Grigg's Grigg. been playing it role, hasn't he? Yeah. And doing it well. I reckon Grigg on Stanton, do you think? Yeah. Mm. yeah. That's not a bad matchup. Because he's yeah. a good, he so. good, good runner run with him. Yeah. 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 If, it's, if it's Watson, then you look at Thomas or one of these other mm. guys to maybe lock him down. Mm. Definitely. And then, you know, if Jacko gets up, it's important for us as well. Well, if he He's doesn't that. get up, would uh, Anthony Miles be in the have frame, do you think? He would mm. have to be. Yeah. Or would it be like a Matty Arnott or someone like that, maybe? Both played well in the VFL. We'll mm. get through the, yep. the uh, update later yeah. on. But I think Jacko will come up. He's pretty confident. Yep. Yeah, he will. So. Yeah, that midfield battle is going to, obviously, like yeah. it does every week, it's going to go a long way to determining, you know, the outcome, isn't it? It's one of those games, dream time too, that you never really get an indication of... You know how you know in terms of ladder position, they're always sort of close games and can oh, go either way. Sure. So it'd be interesting to see who who rises. Forecast for maybe a bit of patchy rain. Yeah. I'm not yeah. sure if that who that helps or hinders. Maybe it doesn't make any difference. No, yeah, we'll be right. Not. I think mm. we'll win. Mm. Well, we're all pumped for it. We're looking forward to getting I there. I think we've got more ability to score at the moment score. than what they do. And Jack is, you know, I mean, having kicked those eleven, his confidence levels will be up. And when he when he's like that. He's very hard to stop. Yeah, I wonder very, if they, very hard they to stop. play him deep again like they did on the weekend. He didn't spend a whole lot of time up the ground. He yeah, sort of started I, in the centre and drifted I, I forward. Would, and then I would think he would. Yeah. I would think so. So he'll get the Hurley or Hooker, do you think? 
Um, yeah, oh, look, I don't know. It'll be interesting. Yeah, it'll be, will be. Because yeah. uh, obviously we're going to have some tools gonna, down well, there Well, that's well. right. They're going to have to look yeah. at, yeah, for, yeah, Vickery Griffiths. Yeah. Mm. So Hooker might get one of the tools. Mm. So, yeah, it'll nah, be interesting be to see. Uh, but get there early. Get there for the pre-game entertainment. It's as good as ever, um, the entertainment before the game. And... Um, Pre-purchase your tickets too, just to make sure you get yourself there, because mm. um, for eighty-four thousand last year. And uh, what are they thinking? Are they predicting? Well, I think they're looking uh, around the seventy thousand mark. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In, in, probably into the seventies. Yeah, good. So yeah. Get, but get here first. Get here for the yeah, the absolutely, VFL. absolutely. the VFL absolutely. curtain raiser. Are yeah. They planned beforehand. Yeah, huge. I'm going to come and have a look. That'd be huge. Just before we move on to that, yeah. uh, Shane Edwards, of course, we mentioned before, is our sole Indigenous player in the in the game. He looks forward to this every year. I think he's played in six, uh, and he did a press conference earlier this week. Yeah, it's a it's a huge game. Um, you know, on top of the event, both teams need a win, and it's always close. And um, yeah, we just we just need to shut them down and continue to to build on the momentum we got on the weekend. Uh, it does give us confidence in the game plan, but we know when we execute, uh, we can take it to the best take it to the best of them. So um, there's a bit of reinforcement, but we we knew what we could do already. It was good in the game last year, Shane. I think he kicked three goals. Yeah, in the yeah, game last did. year, uh, yeah. in Richmond's loss. I think last time Richmond's won a dream time was. Three, oh, but yeah, they've won the last ago. two. Yeah, they've okay. won the last two. Yeah. Yeah. So mm. looking forward. So I think it's four and four to six. Yeah, uh, four to five. They've four won five. five. We won four. Yeah. yeah. yeah there do, you go. do you give um, advice to players now not to bring up the game plan at all? Do you just say, don't <laughs> mention the game plan, whatever you do? No, I just say to them, and this is the truth, that the game plan hasn't really changed no, over the last not. four years. Yeah, uh, so stop mentioning it. You tinker it. with it, of course, <laughs> just to evolve. So don't bring it up in discussion then. Yes. Whatever you do. Exactly mm. right. Poor Jackie. About <laughs> nine minutes into that press conference, he was Have you, going so well. Matthew, <laughs> like back in, in your yeah. day as a player, when you gave a few interviews, did you ever get into that situation where you were just trying to expand on something and you're thinking... Where am I going with this? Yeah, Where's no, it going? Yeah, I can't, can't remember specifically. Yeah. But there's been no doubt at times where you just get... Because they'll ask things in five different ways, yeah, the same yeah. question. Yeah. And in the end, you think you're repeating yourself, but yeah. you probably just have to repeat yourself. Because yeah. if you start trying to expand and elaborate, mm. which can happen if you think you're saying the same thing over and over again, yeah. that's then what that's occurs. That's when you get a bit yeah, when you're stuck. Not, yeah, you're the, not even meaning to say mm. it. The master at, at straight batting, no offence to you, Richo, mm. Joel Bowden. Oh, the bear. Number yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just would yeah, answer. No, he was, he'd yeah. have one answer and he'd just say, yeah. he would say it 40 the times. The ultimate politician. Could repeat mm. himself about <laughs> Yes, he could. Mm. All right, we well, mentioned the VFL uh, before. We uh, So last week's game was against Werribee. It uh, was a 55-point loss in the end. It was a very big contrast to the AFL oh. game. The VFL boys kicked 0-8 in the first quarter. Oh, no. It was extraordinary. And it was 1-11 at half time. It was only 17 points behind, but they kicked 11 points. They were gettable too. They were Very a couple. Gettable yeah, shots. absolutely. Finished off with 8-17, but uh, Werribee kicked away late to win that one fairly comfortably in the end. Uh, there were some really impressive performances, which will uh, put some pressure on some guys in the AFL side. Ricky Pettit, who's played a few games uh, back there at the VFL level well. He's in good form. 28, 28 disposals, eight inside fifties, and six tackles. He even had to go into the ruck yeah, at one stage. Oh, did he? Well, because Oren Big O was on the bench and Todd Elton had yep. gone off. Um, and to give Ivy yeah. a bit of a chop out, yeah. he was oh, actually too, he wasn't. And the instruction, I think, he wasn't even going up for the no. tap out. It was just, <laughs> just to be an extra mid, mid in over. there. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, fair enough too. Uh, we mentioned Ivy, uh, nineteen disposals, forty-one hitouts, seven clearances, seven inside fifties, and two goals. Jeez, yeah, that's a solid impressive, play. Isn't yeah. It? yeah. Those so, numbers just, say that you got to play him. He's ready. Twelve contested possessions, so uh, he was in the thick of everything. Anthony Miles was tagged for the first mm, time this year. Gee. Worked through that, got 19 disposals, uh, eight clearances still, so he played his role. Matty Arnott, we talked about, had a fantastic third quarter, um, 17 disposals all up, seven tackles, nine clearances, and a goal, so he's mm-hmm. uh, clearly in the frame again. Aaron Edwards had 13 disposals and kicked two goals, one, um, and uh, did his usual work there at VFL level. So um, a disappointing afternoon all round, but... Um, some stuff to work with there for the VFL boys. And this week, of course, it's a curtain raiser. It's a dream yeah, time to G. It's 2 p.m. here at the ME Bank Centre. Um, and they're just almost putting the finishing touches on the interface around Looks the good. oval. So we'll, mm. we'll know in the next couple of days whether they can open up the gates mm. and, and uh, you know, get rid of this, the uh, restrictions on capacity. So uh, that'll be that'll be a fantastic. Be a big crowd. So if you can get about two in now, what will they get oh, in no, the stand? Got, I think we've got two and a half, two and a half yeah. in. So what would you get in now then? Four oh, and a half? Four and a half, mate. Yeah. yeah. 
maybe. Yeah, so four and a half, five, maybe. It'll, it'll be, be a good little atmosphere there. Oh, but the atmosphere will be brilliant. Yeah, absolutely will. brilliant. So, of course, they do play Essendon, which makes sense. Mm. Uh, and that game is actually a round nine game in the VFL. It's round eight mm. this weekend. There's a state game on as well. Ah, Richmond yeah. Essendon's the only VFL game okay. on. And then next yeah. week, Richmond and Essendon will have the bye. So. Is there, and I think there's a special medal as well, isn't there, for there is. best for best player on yeah, the ground? I there is. The, Absolutely. I, don't know. I think it's the though. Sir Doug Nichols medal, I think you'll find. Jeez, you are After sharp. Pastor Sir Doug Nichols, the late great, yeah. who was a champion player for Fitzroy. Did you did you come up with the idea for that? No, I didn't. <laughs> Do you <laughs> wish you did? No. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm happy that it's there, but I think it's a great idea. All then. right. So a big day for us on Saturday. So get yeah. to the VFL before the AFL. He had to bend it. It was the Beyonce to the left, to the left. And he got there. He's got five. How good was Morris Rioli? He was a beautiful player. <laughs> He, was, he just was a beautiful player. A One silky, of the best I've ever seen at this yeah, club. As a kid, I loved Morris. He was extraordinary. He was unbelievable. So I thought... Couldn't be tackled. Could no, not be tackled. And, and he could tackle. And like his nephew, Cyril, mm. he was one of the best tacklers probably the yep. game has ever seen, Morris Rioli. Yep, yep. So let's have a look at Morris Rioli's uh, top five games mm. that we've sort of gone through. Yep. Tone, you helped me with this, of course, mm-hmm. a collaboration. So number five was round one, 1987 v West Coast. It was uh, West Coast's first game. First game in the comp. We were up by 33 points at three-quarter time mm-hmm. and somehow lost that game. Oh, no. I know. It was <laughs> extraordinary. By 14 points. But, but the reason we were up by so much at three-quarter time. The person who got us involved in the game was mm. Morris. He had 27 kicks, 10 handballs, mm. and kicked two goals. And that was his return to... WA, obviously coming WA. from South Fremantle where we recruited yeah. him from. Yeah. So a fair game over there for Morris in brilliant. round one, 1987. Yep. Uh, number four was round one, 1982. Well, this was his first game for the Tigers. Of course, he'd just come over to Richmond mm-hmm. that summer, gone into the centre. Mm-hmm. Jeff Rains had to yes. go out of the wing range. Yeah. He probably wasn't that happy about mm-hmm. it. But Morris didn't let down in his first game against Fitzroy out at Waverley. He had 24 touches, six marks. And Richmond won. Yeah, we romped it in by forty-one points. Yeah, he, he was extraordinary. That and day. I remember Tiger fans walked oh, away going, yeah. "Gee, we've got a beauty here yep. in Morris Rioli." Okay, number three was round nine, 1982, against uh, the Doggies at the yeah. MCG. Only had twelve kicks, but the real engine room specialist had twenty-two handballs. Yeah, it's oh, extraordinary. 22. Thirty-four disposals. Yeah. And uh, a man by the name of Brian Taylor kicked seven goals. Oh, and yeah. you remember him putting a few on he Brian's absolutely chest. Absolutely lace out. Yeah. Lace out to BT. And we won that game again mm. by forty-one points. Number yeah. two. Twenty-two handballs, incredible. Mm. Right? Yeah. This mm. was nineteen eighty-five at Princess Park. Oh, time. I remember this clearly. Yeah. V Hawthorne. Mm. Morris had twenty-nine touches and a goal. But Michael Roach kicked 11 goals. He did. That was the yeah. previous time that a player had kicked yeah. 11. Up before the, Jack. Yeah, yeah, before Jack. And, and he again, again, Morris fed him. Yeah, he did. Mm. Laced him out a few times. But obviously, this is the number one. 1982 grand final. Oh, yeah. Which Richmond lost, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. We were yeah, still flat at night. Nightmares about it. But of course, <laughs> Morris uh, was the Norm Smith medalist yeah, on that side. day. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he kicked three sausage rolls. We lost. Yeah, and, and he was just did everything possible to get us over the line that day. But, it, was, uh, it was terrific. Yeah, we were a bit flat, but that was mm. one of Morris's best games. The Norm Smith medalist. Mm. Is that yep. Richmond? It's Richmond's own. last grand final. And I guess uh, no, uh, only Norm Smith. No, medalist. no, no. KB, of course. Kevin Bart. Oh, 1980. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that's Bartlett. right. Yeah. Second Norm Smith Second, medalist yeah. started yeah. in '79, didn't it? It, it did yeah. with Wayne Harms, who yeah. was Len Smith's grandson. So there you go, Morris Rioli. Mm. Morris Rioli, uh, top five games. Mm. Good top five. Good top it five. And uh, that's just some club news floating around. Of course, it's Dreamtime Week, so there's plenty happening here at the ME Bank Centre. Uh, open training for fans this Friday at 9.45, so that's here at the ME Bank Centre. Uh, also, there's a Power of Sport Dreamtime function, which is on here in the Morris Rioli room upstairs. Uh, Saturday, there's a Dreamtime Careers Expo here, also here at the club. And then, of course, the VFL game follows that. Gates open at 1 o'clock. Um, so it's $10 for adults and uh, $5 for the rest of the members and concession. Um, of course, Richmond members getting free if you show your 2014 membership card into that game. Um, the Long Walk, which is having its 10th anniversary as well. It's, uh, there's a fun run, well, sorry, sorry, a fun walk around the town at 10.30, and then from 5.30, the walk makes its way to the MCG. And walks are much more fun than runs. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Much more. That is true. Um, the Rio Tinto Footy Means Business Cup, which is the curtain raiser to the AFL game. That's at, from 3 to 5 p.m. 
uh, Aaron Davey squad versus the David Roden squad. That's, of course, the best emerging Indigenous players from around Australia, so that's an important game for them. Um, and, of course, tickets for the Dreamtime of the G game uh, are available now through the Richmond website. If you head there, you'll be able to uh, follow the links through. Uh, pre-match entertainment, there's Kutcher Edwards, uh, Deline Briscoe and Dave Arden. Um, and, of course, the players, which we mentioned before, will be wearing their, their Dreamtime Guernseys. They were designed by... Mick Harding, and uh, you can find out more also on the Guernsey and where you can buy it. Um, of course, all proceeds go to the Corrin Gamagee Institute. Um, go to the Richmond website for more info. What does Shane Edwards think of this Guernsey? I think he said Loves it was it. the best one. Oh, I reckon yeah. it's the best. Mm. With that, without disrespecting no, 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 just no, 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 it's just a personal He loves it's it. just yeah. personal. Okay. Okay. Well, I think it actually really stands out in the Clash Guernsey, the yellow and, and with mm. the grey outline. So, um, congratulations to Mick Harding for that design, and uh, hopefully, the boys do the job on Saturday night. Now, Superboot. Yes. Ah, oh, how are we looking? Hey, did, surely, surely did you would have known to go with Jack. You must have gone uh, with Jack. Tell me you went with Jack. You, you know what? You didn't go with Jack. Uh, I didn't go with him. Well, I'm staggered that I didn't, to be oh, honest well, with you. Oh, well, you flabbergasted. You, you, mate. Like, why didn't I, I go with Jack? I am flabbergasted. Well, because you thought, you thought, I don't know why, but you what? thought Gary Ablett. Junior might be the man is sneaking for. Why did I go with Gary, Gary Ablett? Ablett Junior? I must. Have, you know what? Zero. I had a bad week like the Tigers you, did the week before. You must have thought it was still Gary Ablett Senior playing. I'm not sure. Well, we what ran I the week before against the Saints. Yeah, but four or five, or whatever. Yeah. I can't believe I did that. No, I can't either. It was a. It was a brain fade. There was a few <laughs> it was brain fades really last week. Really dumb. But anyway, uh, <laughs> super boot. Obviously, Jack Rewalt's return to the top yes. of the leaderboard. After uh, kicking eleven goals, now nine percent of our super booters used. Uh, Used uh, their selection on Use Jack this Jack week, card. Mm. so well done to if you them. Had to use your super big card, you would have been oh, right. Oh yeah. Well, I reckon uh, our new leader, yeah. S Springer, on sixty-five Stevie goals. Springer, I've yeah. got a feeling he may have used his card yeah. on Jack. Well, what about if it was Samantha Springer? Well, it could be. Well, what did you say he for? Well, it could be. That I mean, could be the move that wins ten yeah. grand. Yeah. It really, it's, really you're making light been. of the yeah, fact that yeah. there's 10 large here. No, I'm not. I'm certainly not making light of it. <laughs> now, B Chug here is on 58, guys. B Chug. B Chug, right. It could just be B. Could be Betty. Could be Bo. Yeah. Could be Baz. Yeah. Could <laughs> be Brian. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Could be Bartholomew. Yeah, it yeah. could be. <laughs> it could be Bill. <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, and M Endley is on 56 ah, goals. <clears throat> Matt, okay. Michael, Michael right. Barry. Morris. Mm. Uh, okay, now Margaret. you can log on, obviously, to get our great monthly prizes on www.thesuperboot.com.au and it's all thanks to our friends at Bingle Car Insurance. Yeah, so this will be the last week because the new month starts yes. shortly, Tone. And oh, we're nearly into great winter. Great prizes yes. up yes. the grabs. You can be what? You can have an iPad and mm. cash. Yeah, and cash. All sorts yeah. of stuff. We just love for being a month, just for four Johnny weeks cash. worth of selections. Yeah. So easy, Tone. Even you could play Super Oh, Boot. I'm not sure I could. No, you probably couldn't. No, probably not. <laughs> anyway, let's move on. I'll tell you what I can do, and that's produce some pearls of uh, historic wisdom. There's a lot of pages. I don't know if that yeah. made any sense at all, but anyway. Too We're many going pages. back to 1971 this week, boys. Oh, great. I want to check my emails. What happened? Else? What happened? Yeah. There's an H in it. What happened? What, ha- what, ha- what, ha- what happened? What happened? <laughs> not what happened. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> <laughs> so you know the Queen's English? I don't care. Well, well, I suppose she's not Zimbabwean, is she? But anyway, um, back in 1971, under there was an, uh, as it was, the Australian National Football Council uh, that had was the governing body of football throughout Australia. Right. And that there was a ruling that was related to national service at the time because we were still involved in the Vietnam War and there was national service and everything. Under this ruling. A player from the Sturt Football Club, a star full forward by the name of Malcolm Greenslade, um, who'd kicked a swagger goals for Sturt and who was a very successful South Australian uh, club, he was eligible to play for Richmond because he was doing his national service training in Victoria. So at the start of the 71 season, he lined up um, for Richmond. At that stage, he played 77 games with Sturt and he'd kicked 237 goals, so he could really play. So he stepped into a Richmond side that was containing the likes of Royce, Hart, KB, Sheedy, Burke, Dean, Green, Stewart, Clay, Barry Richardson, Rex Hunt. Um, he was given uh, number 23 Guernsey, and uh, if you thought that he might have been a bit overawed to be part of that star studded yeah. lineup, well, that certainly wasn't uh, the case. How'd he go? Well, his first touch he played, we played against St Kilda at uh, the then VFL Park out at Waverley. 
and his first touch, he soared over uh, Richmond captain Roger Dean to take a mark that many years later, in 2008, when we had the centenary celebrations and mm. we did the you know, Tiger Treasures and the Marks of the Century was nominated as one of the marks yeah. of the century by Richmond player so his right. first touch in a Richmond jumper. Now, he went on. He played just two games. Why did he only he play two? Well, because then he actually went back and played for Sturt oh. after that, you know. But he but he had two games, so he had uh, obviously a huge impact in that first game. The second week, the second week, another South Australian player from Sturt, Michael Noonan. Remember Mick yeah, Noonan, yeah. who subsequently coached Fitzroy? He did. Many years later. Yeah. Mick Noonan also played. So the two of them played against South Melbourne at the Lake Oval. It was Noonan's one and only game. He kicked three goals. Greenslade kicked six in that second game against South Melbourne. And that was it. Never played. Oh. We, we had won both those games against St Kilda and then thrashed South at South and never played again. So, so did that, you get dropped? Or no, no, no. They, they, just, went, back they, they just went back to Sturt. And that, oh. yeah, they just, there was that window of opportunity to play here under that ruling. Oh, right. yeah. And Malcolm Grootslade played two games. Mick Noonan the one. Uh, as I say, Noonan kicked three goals and was one of the best against South. Greenslade took that mark, which was then nominated yeah. for one of the marks of the century. Kicked six well, against South a week later, never played again. That shows you that those yeah. star SANFL players would have been good enough. Yeah. The yeah. ones that never yeah. came over. Yeah. No. And yeah. of course, two years earlier, Royce Hart, under the same ruling, yeah. Royce had played in played the 69 for... grand final against Carlton, which we won against at Richmond. A week later, played for Glenelg under that oh, ruling. Oh, really? Yep. Played for Glenelg. In a grand Just final? In a grand final. Did he win that? No, they lost that one. Isn't the, uh, he got Hart. knocked out. Yeah, he played one game. Wow. Grand final. Isn't because the it, time machine coming together beautifully? It's going well, isn't what? it? It's going well. When you get questions about it, you you, you, you oh. think this is it. This is uh, you've yeah. made it. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. We're engaged. Yeah. Well, as you mentioned before, I see there's been a bit of a hiatus. It was only a bags. short hiatus. No, well, a couple of weeks. Two we weeks. Went well, that's right. So, so we're, we're expecting Well, I was trying to think how yeah. it started off. Cause, Sharp stuff. Yeah, well, because yeah. so I know a lot of jokes about uh, unemployed people, but none of them work, so I probably <laughs> won't go there. Um, a mate of mine, right, a <laughs> mate of mine tried to convince his young son that it's perfectly normal to accidentally poo your pants, right? But the young son wasn't having any of that, right? He's still making fun of his dad for doing it. Yeah. Um, My cat Kev thinks it's all right. Oh, to how's Kev wants. going? Oh, he's not good. Kev. Had an incident last night with oh, Kev. Oh, Nathan again, Brown uh, popped around to have a look at oh, my yeah. house because I've done a yeah, few renovations house, yeah, yeah. and he hadn't seen them, Brownie. Mm. And I went and answered the door. And at the time it took me to get to the door to come back oh. uh, through the house and just showing Nathan around, Kev dropped his lunch <laughs> in, my, in my bedroom. And <laughs> just the whole so time. That was um, brown on brown, so to yeah. speak. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's okay. an impromptu gag, that one. Um, yeah, all right. Did you hear, did I tell you about the snail who got uh, mugged by a gang of turtles? No. Well, the police showed up and asked what happened. He replied, I don't know, it all happened so quickly. Oh, jeez. Um, oh, what did the bra <laughs> say to the hat? Oh, right. uh, you go on ahead and I'll give these two a lift. Uh, <laughs> very generous, Con. Very generous. <laughs> um... Some people think that uh, filling animals with helium is wrong, yeah. but I say whatever floats your goat. <laughs> why did the duck? And finally, Where why did, did get him Why did the know. duck? Why did the duck go into rehab? Why? Because it was a quack addict. <laughs> oh. Have you got a book of these? Like, where do they come no, from? No, 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 no. I think there must be a I book. I might publish yeah. my own book. I might get all these gags together no, don't. over the last three years and publish a book. Why don't what do you think? You? It'd be about as well, successful as the Six Degrees of Danny Dick Foss. <laughs> hey, that was a bestseller. Don't worry about that. How many that. did you sell? Four. <laughs> I got paid up front, though. It was good. All right, that's the end of that. Um, get to the MC, uh, not the MCG, but also get to the yeah, Bank Centre beforehand. Absolutely. Two o'clock, VFL. It's going to be a big day. Yeah, Hopefully yeah. the Tigers can get the job get done. Get the train. That was so much yeah. easier. <laughs> good song. <laughs>